You're listening to the Forest School Podcast with Lewis Ames and Gemma Sutherland. You feel a little bit jittery? Jittery? It's probably because I am sleep deprived because I've got a new puppy and it's like having a baby. And so, you know, I wake up at three o'clock. Oh, bleary eyed, cleaning up poo, you know, three in the morning. So and you thought those days were behind I, you? I, you know, I just thought it was time. <laughs> I thought my life was so You thought, you so know what, I haven't calm. touched actual poo in a long oh, time. And, yeah, what are you drinking there? What am I drinking? It looks I'm like drinking. gin and tonic in a can. Maybe. Which is quite an interesting choice before a parent and toddler session on a Friday morning. <laughs> Whatever gets you through. <laughs> what actually is it? What actually is it is the cheapest caffeine drink I could find on Amazon in bulk. It is horrendous is it but it yeah. looks like very classy it's got like oranges and lemons on i'll the take front. that like it's really um which is elegant. which is which is le- which is more scummy drinking yeah. a tin of gin and tonic before work <laughs> or drinking a tin <laughs> of like i think the thing is is that caffeine drinks all the branding around them is like power cool you're mm. the best you're f- that isn't power cool that is like it's called warrior oh. it's got a picture of a helmet on it oh but on the back it's like lovely classy oranges and lemons like it's a little punch maybe that's, cocktail maybe that's to do, it. do you know what i saw for the first time and i didn't realize so i before i go to the gym um i have pre-workout which is caffeine powder and um yep Stuff that makes blood vessels go. No, 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 this is interesting. <laughs> I think it's interesting. To you. I, fo- I saw for the first time on Amazon, Gemma's put a hat over her head, but you're all listening to me, which is lovely. Um, caffeine mm. powder specifically for gamers. What? It's called like. Con- yeah, I ne- see? She's coming back out of the hat now. Concentration boost, faster keyboard skills. It was like, oh my God. D- down some caffeine and then do competitive gaming. That's it was really, really interesting. I find that whole... Twi- well, I find it twisted, especially because I'm watching uh, the programme Industry at the moment, which is all about like the world it, yeah. of corporate banking. I mean, it is just like... It's insane. It's an insane programme. It's the filthiest thing I've ever watched on television. But also, they're all just like doing every drug under the sun, including drugs to like keep them like mentally focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La, 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 la. Um, so, yeah. Anyway... Anyway. Anyway, that's on, on, the, on, the, on the subject, subject of being of, super professional and rules yeah, and rules. things like that. Yes. I thought we would vaguely talk about. That's that's how every I'm going to start renaming the podcast. Vaguely talking Listen, about. Java, vaguely. Ve- sometimes kind talk, of about, talk about. Blah. Kind of talk about, and we can't work out what the heading is for this. No, but it's kind but I of reckon we'll find out once we get to the end of it. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, would you say it's brought on because we had Ofsted last Friday? <laughs> we yes. had Ofsted, it happened. Um, and it was completely fine. It was completely fine. Um, I wouldn't say it was like easy. It was like, you know, okay, get psyched, get prepared, yeah, get yeah. ready. You couldn't have done nothing. You couldn't and, have done nothing. And gone through. And we are only, we're on the childcare register, not the early years register anymore. So it makes it a different kind of inspection. For it? people outside the UK, Ofsted yes. is the like education inspecting body, checks that anyone. And childcare. Who, yeah, checks that anyone that's operating in childcare is meeting certain requirements, is keeping children safe. And they also do a lot of stuff around prevent and stopping, um, you know, making yeah, sure you're on top of safeguarding and yes, things like that yes and so if you're on <clears throat> the child care register which you might be for um if you are looking after children who are older than early years um or you're running holiday clubs you're doing stuff that is you know for a schooly stuff maybe independently not in a school then uh you need to be officer registered it's one of those questions that comes up a lot on the discussion group as you were it? saying it i was like i can't believe you're going into details I'm not i would just detail. say to everyone like phone off stage. yes you need to that's just exactly phone what I was, that's exactly where i was yeah. going with it because so many people ask that question like i'm doing blah 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 for x, I'm doing x hours. under conditions why yeah with parents the children are of... there they're not there the age is blah so um and lots of people reply and go well i'm doing this and i'm not and i'm doing this and i am it's just like just just ring them the only thing is that um uh, that has always been my advice but at some point they're so busy that they you can't speak to a human mm. being they do those like choose the options and then it's like we're busy now goodbye <laughs> and then yeah and you're like i've just been selecting options for what feels like forever but um but no you can phone them and you can ask them all of these questions and get registered folks yeah. do it Take but we so we had it and we thought we'd talk about kind of in general the things that you might so when you think about forest school people think of the Um, lovely sitting under a tree and the sketching with charcoal and the big wide games and all those things Um, and we kind of wanted to talk about the 
professional professional standards, the requirements that come along. It's that backgroundy stuff of going, you know, how do you manage all of that, mm. and how much of that is a is an unseen workload. Mm. Um, and and the emotions around it maybe because like kind of speaking personally, I've got like a weird. I don't know if dichotomy is the right word, but a kind of split thing in my brain where I, on the one hand, I'm like, I, I need to find out all the rules. And like, but that might be breaking a rule. I must find out the rules. And I must adhere mm. to the rules. And I really like stress about it. And like often is one example. So when I was teaching in just mainstream schools, um, I had, I think through my line managers and senior management and the way that schools were run when I was there, just the fear of Ofsted was like, I imagine people were afraid of hell, like when people Mm. were very, very, you know, religious and that was like the just genuine culture of the world. Um, It had been like overblown by my managers in terms of like, well, you know, if Ofsted were watching that, they'd probably say blah, blah, blah. Well, it's all right that you're teaching that way right now because I know blah, 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 but you'll Mm. need to evidence progress in a different way for Ofsted and all this kind of shit all. And I never, and in nine years of teaching, I always missed Ofsted. I was always either pregnant on maternity leave um, or like I'd gone traveling, whatever. So (laughs) just fucked off. Just (laughs) fucked off. And (laughs) one year my head um, persuaded them not to come which was so crafty like I don't know how she did it she just like spent hours on the phone going yeah but you inspected us like you know went into the detail right. of like but how many single gender schools in our local area uh, have been right. inspected in the last four years blah 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 we've been picked out of the hat too soon give us another year oh, wow. Managed managed to defer them which is very crafty but every time that happened like I think if I'd had Ofsted earlier on in my career I would be less terrified of them but anyway so that's my kind of personal thing so I'm terrified of them and I have this really like stickler for the rules thing at the same time it's like, oh, I just hate this I really hate that I'm scared of it I'm hate I hate that it exists even though I know that it needs to exist and I need to follow the rules yeah I think one of the difficult things about um the Ofsted situation is that um they and, and this came up in our um what's the word in our inspection conversation mm. chat with the person. And they're saying that Ofsted is the body that enforces the directions of the Department of Education. They decide... I'm right in saying this, aren't I? I don't know if you are right in saying that, because they, in our inspection, they said, well, that's not an Ofsted matter, that's a... Well, I was no, thinking the at, the end, at the end, they were saying that the Department of... So they were saying we had a conversation about... I can't remember what it was. It was like how many children you could have or... Yeah. Um, uh, days the requirement you can open. Days you can open. And then... Um, and they said, oh, we were having a conversation about this, but it's not actually us at Ofsted that make that decision. It's, anyway, it's an Department outside of Department for Education. Yes, that's where I was going. So, anyway. So the Department for Education has got more hold over decisions than yes. Ofsted. Yeah, I know. We were talking about, because this is a thing that I've said a billion times to I've bought myself, that the, um, the thing, the stuff listed in Ofsted is in no way specific to forest school mm. and so we were talking like she was our inspector was saying so do you know how many children you're allowed you know to talk about ratios and we we're like yeah blah 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 but we never have that many because it's forest school you know you mm. never have as many children as we are legally allowed to have and she was like yeah i know like can you imagine and we were like no we can't we imagine and yeah. i was saying to her that um i think that there should be separate offset requirements for forest schools so in some ways there are things that are just not relevant like how ventilated is your space and how much yeah. out- outdoor space you've got and all that kind of thing um so some things are like well we shouldn't be held to that but in other ways it should be more stringent and should be more about um considering ratios but then having said that it is actually we are all sensible adults we can you know, manage that risk for ourselves. Well, this it's is not. We don't need Ofsted saying, "Oh, if you're doing forest school, you're only allowed 15 kids." Like that's the job of the FSA. If there needs to be guidance put in place in terms of effective good forest school, but that is part of your own professional judgment and and risk assessment. I think that is like nail on the head why these things are difficult. In that, for the majority of people who do forest school, they are in their own. Um, God, the word bubble's just been ruined this mm. year, right? I'm going to use the word bubble, but I don't mean like they're touching people. I mean bubble as in metaphorical bubble. Um, so you and I are 99% of the time completely autonomous in what we want to do, what we want to implement, the ethos that we want to put in, the activities that we want to run. And lots of forest school people are similarly, you know, it, doing forest school, I think, encourages you to be like, I risk assess things 
um, on my own. I'm confident in my own abilities. I'm confident in what I'm, how my behaviour management is working. Blah blah blah. So any outside authority f- makes the hair on the back of my yes. neck stand up and bristle and like, yeah. how dare you question my exactly, things? Yeah. I'm in my own little castle and you may not I know. touch me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that anything we do would be seen by the outside authority, like Ofsted yeah. and yeah. Um, safeguarding all those, all those, you know, very important and the FSA and all those very important. Um, bodies they they have a role to play but it's such a rarity to be and the similarly schools you know people who have been teaching a very long time have told me that like they i've talked to some people who can remember when there wasn't a curriculum oh yeah it was like yeah you it's just, only since 1980 something that yeah there's been a curriculum i mean to yeah, me that's that, i know eight eons ago yeah. um. <laughs> <laughs> um but yes it's like um this is the so in my panicky like preparing for Ofsted, is there anything that they're gonna ask us or that I haven't like read recently that I need to like swap on? Yeah. Um, and so had me trawling the forest school support group in case anybody had like asked this question before or wrote oh, yeah, this yeah. down and stuff. And one of the issues that came up um, in my brain, not the Ofsted raised, um, and also it's worth saying that every Ofsted inspector is different and oh, if I yes. just say they did, we didn't get asked that doesn't mean that Ofsted don't ask that because there's been millions of stories or like a, you know someone recently was inspect, not inspected but had a pre-reg visit as a childminder mm. and the Ofsted inspector told them that they could they would not be allowed to be outside with children as a lone worker um, oh really? They would, you know Ofsted would not condone that and that childminders are not allowed to take children to the woods and like loads of childminders like replied going yeah, I definitely Are they do. high? Like, what the hell? Yeah. What the heck? Anyway, um, so one of the things that came up was like, oh, like daily checks. Like, do I need a written record of like, I have checked the whole forest and I've... I've la, checked la, la, every la. stick <clears throat> on the floor. The leaves yes, are slippery yes. with 40% moisture. Yes. And so <laughs> I was just like, I think, you know, where you put, you can search in a group. Yeah. If you don't know, you can search in a Facebook group. Like... Don't worry about it. Just you move should, on. Just move on. You should search in a Facebook group rather than asking the question for 50 minutes time. Uh, <clears throat> so I did daily checks and there was such an interesting like debate it's about a year old um, and some people going like I have to fill in this box this box this box because I work on like forestry commission land or wooden mm. trust land or whatever and so they want to know the daily temperatures high and low all of this like the amount of detail and they need me to sign it off and blah 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 or my employer needs me to do this and then other people going well I don't have to do that, but I just choose to on my like daily plan where I've written down all the stuff we're gonna do. Mm. Then I have a tick box thing and I check everything, blah. And then other people, I won't name names, going, can we just stop all of this? <laughs> can we just stop, like, you know, thinking that we have to write everything down and sign it in case we get sued? Like, we're all professionals. We've mm. had our training. This should be a given, you know. And you know, and some people going, oh, I even work in a indoor environment and we have to like check the tables or something on a daily basis and and it's like a finding that sweet spot spot in between like meeting the requirements and making sure that things are are safe of course that is the job of a forest school leader and doing all of all of those things that keep children and learners happy and safe um and then meeting like the requirements of the powers and the overseeing Mm. whoever that might be for you um but like keeping your practice like authentic and trusting yourself and your own judgment um and that is a tricky thing to navigate and i do you know yeah, what i mean yeah i do I, it was i was thinking about uh sh- surely that is in my mind at least that is the point of having a qualification mm. because if you didn't have a qualification then i can understand saying okay you've got no training in this or you've got no evidence of training in this so to cover ourselves we need to list everything we need to make sure that it's done whatever i feel like part of the point of doing your level three or doing whatever qualification you're going to do um in any job is to go that you don't have to show that's the that's the shortcut that says i'm not going to show all my work anymore this piece of paper this qualification this certificate says Mm. i work to a certain standard i have a certain set of skills i don't need to evidence everything Mm. anymore um and it's interesting i think where a level three sits because in some ways um a level three in forest school you know is like cool you're qualified you can uh it's the thing of like so here's the here's the dichotomy is uh 
you can the level three is is publicized and set up as a like once you've got a level three you can set up your own forest school you can do all of the practice that that involves and i think what that is is that's passing your driving test find out about cpd courses at childrenoftheforest.com check out the podcast links for more details then you learn to drive afterwards. Mm. Because I think there's lots of things. So the level three part of the qualification is um, writing a handbook, writing your um, a safeguarding policy for your setting, for your fake real organisation. This is our safeguarding policy. Now, that is not the same as working out how to book yourself on a, um, uh, like a county registered mm. safeguarding course. That is not the same as maintaining safeguarding certificates and... Uh, following that up with, you know, the Lado, the and, Lado stuff, and the yeah. MASH. When and the, to contact Ofsted. And, all yeah. of that stuff is like, yeah. when you've done your level three, you have got almost the keys, the keys to that thing mm. that you then have to go and do. Or like, okay, you've, you've got your level three in forest school. Are you then with that information ready to pass Ofsted? Mm. Probably not. No. You know, there's so many other bits that go behind it that do need all that work. And all those... They're, che- they're, they're checks they keep it you know the argument of like well I guess some of it is like is this keeping children safe or is this meeting a government's agenda so we had some interesting experiences running being on the child care register like we are now our curriculum isn't assessed yeah. or looked at <clears throat> in any way um, our safeguarding is our health and safety is mm-hmm. um, our record keeping all that stuff but what we deliver isn't looked at when we were doing early years stuff that is very much like okay all children in the country in the uk must to be doing certain things and that for me was where it got into some tricky like okay how much of this is current government initiatives and oh, how trends much trends and fashions yeah. And, yeah i know and i kind of, kind of i keep coming back to that thing of if forest school was recognized more more widely by the powers that be. I think, you know, it is recognised by the general public, by parents, by mm. um, people who work with young people pretty well now. But if it was recognised as significantly important practice by the powers that be, yeah. which it should be, then a lot of these issues wouldn't wouldn't exist. These kind of weird... Do you think? like Well, I think so, because I think... I think... That, so that thing you were talking about, like doing your level three and then there are, there's still loads more you have to do obviously that's that's really clear to everybody in terms of like your practice and like what's going to work well with your groups and how, mm-hmm. how, who are you as a leader or not kind of thing but in terms of like you also need to go out and find out what regulations apply to you and how to meet those standards it's going to vary so dif- so differently in terms of like your insurer the land you're working on who you're working with if you're mm-hmm. working on a school site or if you're working independently and all of those variables and i kind of feel like if there was more recognition from the powers that be some of those things wouldn't some of those problems so for example you know you do your level three and you've got you know you're like okay i know what type of leader i want to be i know how to run my sessions and then you're working for an employer and they go yep here's your insurance policy we're already insured and the insurance policy goes into so much detail about like you must wear a glove when you're mm. using tools and it's like yeah but i've decided personally in my own practice that i don't want to do that but now my insurer is saying xyz and i wonder whether if there was more recognition from on high in terms of like forest school is a thing the level three is a recognized qualification a bit like if you do your teaching qualification that's just generally accepted everywhere isn't it yeah. that's a like you yeah, can yeah. get a job in any school and you're trusted to you know obviously like meet the requirements of the school and, and mm-hmm. your managers but you're generally just trusted to be able to do that and to teach so but that's not the same with the forest school level three person that you are often torn in, in and pulled in different directions because there are so many variables involved. Do you see I'm trying to go with that? I do. I was wondering whether, I think, if I was, I was listening and, and also thinking, well, what would, you know, like, well, how would I fix this? Mm. How, what would the recognition be? And I wonder if it would be closer to, like, doing a PGCE where half of the course content is what a level three is now mm-hmm. and the other half is, like, a t- is the teaching, the... the, 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 the um, the requirements, the safeguarding, the um, 
you know, health and safety stuff, because you don't cover all your health and safety in the level three. That's, mm. It's silly to say that you do. But I think what, what happens to lots of people is they become forest school <clears throat> trained and then they become niche experts. So they become, so it's like, oh, I've done my level three um, and I did my level three because the nursery that I work in um, paid for me to do it. Yeah. And so then I ran the level three, I ran my forest school courses in a nursery and then I set up my own nursery and then I did the nursery and I, you know, passed off stead through the nursery. Blah, blah, blah. Um, if you ask that person about what would the requirements be uh, I want to take a group of 10 year olds out on a holiday club mm. they're not in the same position in the, se- in the way that like so when I did my my PGCE was all of primary so it's from from a bit of early years up to mm. what are they 11 12 mm. some of them um, and the qualification meant you can teach appropriately in any of that age range mm. but the forest school thing it doesn't give you that. It kind of goes like, well, you can teach anything from... You can run courses now for <coughs> six-month-old babies. That's forest school. You can run it for adults with learning disabilities, mm. adults who are doing... Um, who just want to do some stuff. You know, that, that age range is massive. Mm. And to think <coughs> that you have got the skills or the... That's why there's so much, like, mental load behind it all to go, right, I want to do this. And lots of people, I imagine, are pulling between... And we are, to an extent pulling between that like what would you do in an ideal dream world mm. what do you think is best for your learners and what are the requirements being placed on you um, and I think that is something that is underrepresented in the advertising for like you can run a forest school business mm. so I think the FSA Okay, this, the, let's declare the conflict of interest. Obviously, I've got conflict of interest here, but the FSA has just put out this leaflet about it's like 10, 15 pages how to set up a forest school. And I really liked that there were some pages that were like, Do you really want to do this? Are you prepared to get this insurance sorted? Are you prepared for whatever else? So it's like when you think about, I mean, going right back to the beginning, you think, oh, I want to run forest school, I want to, want to run a holiday club. Cool. Um, I'm imagining now the craft activities and where will we sit and eat our lunch and where will we do whatever. What you're probably not imagining is, hey, have you thought about what you're going to do if someone comes to you and discloses something about mm. FGM? Mm. You know, have you thought about what you're going to do if you meet a parent and you're pretty sure that that child that's come mm. to your session is not going home to a safe mm. thing? That's part of running a forest school. Yeah. And it's a really important part of running a forest school that I think is kind of like, it's almost like un, underappreciated, I'm not. But it's, it's one of those things that is, until, or like I was thinking about, you know, reporting of accidents and knowing when yeah. to contact Riddor and the health and safety executive and all of those kind of other things, that on a kind of minute to minute, day to day basis, these things don't happen. Yeah. So, and it's such a an engrossing job. Like if you're, if it's all going great, you are in flow as much as the kids are all mm-hmm. the time. So it then is like a real jolt. It's like kind of someone grabbing the scruff of your neck and like jolting you back into like the real Adulthood. world. Yeah. And you suddenly, and, and it's a, some, someone might say something, you might read something online or you might realise that like something, one of your qualifications is up for renewal or something. I'm talking again from personal experience that you're, you're just like in this like la 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 world. I'm in the I woods, in the I woods. love trees. Oh my God, I've just had this moment. I'm making with this, mulled with apple this, juice. With this kid and they're looking at lichen under a, jeweler's loop and they're like oh my god there's microscopic creatures under there ah! it's so amazing and then you're suddenly like holy fuck shit what earth? and then usually it's always fine like it's mm. always fine and but it's just that kind of because it's such a shift it like physically hurts me that i have to go <laughs> oh shit um it's a bit like the tendrils of attention thing you mm. know when someone's engrossed in something and then you rip them out but over like a longer period of time so I'm like just generally engrossed in like the world of doing our job yeah and then the tendrils get ripped out and it's like no 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 you have to make sure that da, 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 da. yeah um, and that really hurts but it's something that you have to go with and it's a bit like like we've had moments haven't we in running business like weirdly last year was quite like whoa there were kind of some big business stuff that kind of happened it was the choppy us, choppy waters yeah and it just made us kind of go i think like you know dodgy it's just you know things that were oh this is like an adult experience mm. that i have to deal with and it is like painful and it's part of running any business i imagine um but 
you grow from it and it's like well we kind of said that didn't we in the inspection after the inspection with Ofsted yeah. we you know hung up the phone and went crikey we've actually been through first hand in, yeah. in five years um, quite a lot you know they were yeah. kind of what would you do if this happens you're like well actually it has happened yeah, and this yeah, and this yeah. and yeah. Not, none of it's our fault none of it is like no. when we're, we're <laughs> negligent and so oh yeah loads of them have broken their legs <laughs> fucking hell yeah 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 Oh, <laughs> falling out no, of a but, tree you know, every day. And just to pat ourselves <laughs> on the back, like she did say, "Oh, I can tell that you guys used to be on the early re- years register. Like you're not like over prepared, but you like know your stuff, and it's really." And so we had yeah. obviously you don't go into detail, disclose names or anything, but we had story. No, when she like you say, she said, "What would you do about blood blah?" And we go, "Oh, actually, when a when a child did bloody blood blah." It was about blah, inclusion, wasn't we, it? It was like, yeah. "What would you do if somebody came with yeah. this?" And we were like, "Well, we would meet it in this way, in this way, and in this behavior. way." Behavior. It was about behavior oh, as yeah. well, wasn't it? Um, and you know, I would put this in place for them, this in place for them, and this is what happened. This was the outcome. Um, and she was like, "Whoa! I mean, that's that's you know, basically said that's amazing." Yeah. She wasn't allowed to say that's amazing. Yeah, we're in charge of Ofsted now, actually, guys. Amazing. I've held it back to an no, um But that was really good, wasn't it? And that was good to sort of have it reflected back at you because a lot of the time, that's why so many people ask questions on the support group. It's like you're sort of floundering in the dark, like mm. you kind of go, "Oh God!" And again, should I be you doing? and I have got each other. Yeah. We've got each other yeah, yeah. to annoy and pester at all hours with yeah. questions. Yeah, exactly. Oh shit! It's mostly me, isn't it? <laughs> Spamming like sometimes. Share like, our um, le- just yeah. yeah. And like <laughs> and the whole COVID thing, as everybody has been in the same boat in terms of like, there's the powers that be and the bloody rules and regulations. Well, I th- and I was just like addicted to it at one time, just kind of going, and and the reason that I was addicted to it was because the documents kept changing so frequently. Mm without an update like no well, the government why... wouldn't go sorry can you look at clause 15 of page 4 again yeah. because we've changed the wording of it now and the number has slightly changed so they wouldn't announce that they changed it so you just had to be on it and read it all but the that's, time if I circle back a bit to what you know this fear of Ofsted and I think that is partly where the fear comes is because Ofsted is a, an enforcing body but they're not necessarily in charge of what's going on you and I have said before that we think there should be some sort of government body that reviews research and shares that research with the education sector and kind of goes right these studies are coming out and they're proving that this is kind of really good practice so let's maybe there is maybe there is but then there's also lobbying and there's also you know people think tanky type people anyway anyway, I'm sure there are but what I was but what it was making me think was that like it's a moving target and Mm. that's what's scary about it is what passed you in your inspection last Mm. time is not like okay we we smashed it last time best practice so let's keep doing it's like okay now you've got to keep moving what do and not moving in terms of like what's new what's coming out that's interesting what's best practice it's like what are they looking for now Mm. what hoop are they have i got which Mm. of these hoops do i have to jump through now Mm. um and actually that can take a lot of for me personally so you have the like um uh i'm gonna i'm gonna say it comes from (laughs) could be wrong i think it comes from a little bit of like worry guilt of like i've got to be meeting the rules and you, you're very worried about that stuff mm. coming through for me the same situation presents as absolute frustration because there are other things i want to do and push forwards mm. i'm like i really need to go and like finish putting the steps down that side of the woods it's a physical job it's going to take like two hours and it's like oh, well actually you need to um update the the report that goes in this file that goes in the file I'm like oh I cannot whereas be. I'm just like overwhelmed sometimes with the terror of but if I haven't ticked that box the whole thing is going to shut down but that's down. what I mean you know I know that it's a priority but I'm frustrated yeah. that it's a priority because I want to go like oh why don't yeah. we do some advertising for this new group why don't we want to mm. you know I want to push the business in in this way I want to try mm. this new project it's like where where in the day do we do that what? in the middle of the night in the middle of, we just need to stop sleeping yeah just, okay. Um, Problem that's solved. That's like when I spam you with all the things on Discord, and I'm like, and another thing, and another document. And another, can you just read these twenty documents before tomorrow, please? Because no, it's because what I get what is, can you read this? Oh, and here's another one. Actually, can you read this one instead? <laughs> Don't worry about it. These have all been disproved. I'll see you in the morning. And I just go, go. Cool. <laughs> that was that was lovely. I'm enjoying that that played out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on its own. That's that's my brain. <laughs> That is basically but, my brain. It's but there. yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy it, the mental load that I dump in there. Well I don't because I share. see that I see that you had a mental load. I, I see your mental load bowel you movement and it. then I see <laughs> and then I go, okay, cool. Uh, we've we've so, but then that again, that's another way where having 
two of us is very useful in terms of so you have taken on more of the Ofsted mm. stuff because I've taken on more of other bits of the business if it was just me trying to run this yeah, yeah, yeah. or just you trying to run this I feel like it's just so yeah, many balls people, in the air yeah, how do people do it well that's why I think people end up with smaller businesses where they go I just run this mm. one group I just mm. focus on this thing yeah um, but that must be the kind of thing where we've said this so many times but haven't said it in a while like buddying up with somebody and they oh, don't yeah. even need to be local to you necessarily although it might be helpful in terms of like your relationship with the local authority or you know regional yeah. regional COVID guidance and all that kind of stuff um, but to share because a lot of people put people's backs up on the online forums about like can you share this policy of yours can you share this isn't even risk assessments it's just like you know tell me what you do with Ofsted and blah 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 Um, and, pe- and it puts people's backs up. But if you had a more personal relationship with like one or two other practitioners who mm. are in a similar kind of field to you, um, then gosh, how helpful that would be. Mm. Sort of like a like a buddy system. And in normal times, that would definitely be like where the local FSA groups mm-hmm. would help with that, right? And you know, applications for forest school training stuff, are now open so about at childrenoftheforest.com. Like like Check out the about, podcast you know, links for up, more details. Each other's sites and um, having regular phone calls with each other, we check in, and you know, because then you don't mind you don't mind sharing your practice if it's with like one other practitioner. But then there was always that chat about, well, you're kind of my competitor if we're local, and I'm sharing, mm. you know, if I'm sharing my. But so you know, each to their own. But um, if what I you was need? Okay, here's myself, the system. I just don't, yeah. Here's the system: is you have a, an anonymous question line. So someone goes like, what are the requirements for kindergartens in Devon? Mm. And you don't know if they're in like the other side. Devon's massive. If they're, it's not, uh, internationally it's not massive, right? But it's quite big. Like you don't know if they're in Plymouth or they're five minutes away. Mm. And so you just go like, okay, I could probably answer that. And you're not worried about the competitiveness of it. You just keep going like, okay, mm. I've ploughed it through. But it's about the relationship though, isn't it? And being able to go, I've got the terror, I've got the mental, the mental fears. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and someone go, oh, yeah, I had that last week. Don't worry, it's this. Yeah. And also, I think... So w- one thing that we don't have, that lots of people listening will have, is, um, like, school mm. requirements, regulations, mm. doing whatever, on top of Ofsted. You know, they're going, like, we're not just going for good anymore, we're going for this, or, like... Um, uh, quite often... So, OK, let's, let's, exp- let's do some, like template mapping so we were saying that we think there should be like different requirements in the Ofsted category for Mm. forest school and I would absolutely stand by people who say well uh, I'm really frustrated because my school has made a blanket decision that they go like every lesson must have a uh, a learning objective Mm. and they include forest school in that thing Mm. or they go every lesson must be documented in the exercise books and you're like fine I mean I don't know what you're doing for PE Mm. but the rest of the school that probably makes sense get some consistency do whatever and I just feel so much for practitioners that go look I just want to keep doing forest school I just want to keep doing this thing how do I it's that thing isn't it you can some rules and regulations and awarding bodies we look at and we go this is very beneficial this is keeping my practice good you know I might let my whatever certificate lapse more than two years so I'm quite glad that that keeps keeps in line takes that out of my hands mental load's gone sometimes when you're like okay but this is just mr so-and-so who's the head of this department or the head of this and he or she or they have decided that that's what we're going to do and so now i have to do it how do i jump through this hoop Mm. in the most applicable way Um, yeah there's kind of pros and cons um in terms of like being under the wing of a of a school that a lot of that kind of mental load might be taken from you because you don't need to be you know maybe worried about your insurance so much because that's covered by the school or Ratios you know and safeguarding training they're going to yeah. arrange that for you hr are going to know when your certificate expires or what level yeah. you need to be or you've got you've got you know you've got a safeguarding lead in the school you don't need to be and that, that is person. partly why you don't get all of the money yeah that's part of you yeah. know that's part of being an employee isn't it of going okay here's some of the income i'm going to earn please can you yeah you know yeah take all of this off my hands yeah but there's also 
yet another hoop to jump through, as you as you say, in terms of what they want you to do or not do. Yes. Yeah, I was trying to think if there were other bodies that we so we've talked about Ofsted, and Ofsted kind of covers our safeguarding requirements as well. Mm. We meet our food hygiene mm. is another one that we do because we serve mm. food as well as it being mm. a thing. That one's quite easy yes. to have ticked through. Um, do some courses. Yeah. Do some uh, online okay. courses. There's an online course. There's also, sometimes you'll find independently run but certified um, like outdoor specific ones and they're really good. Mm. Definitely recommend going on one. Um, and I would say, right, so I've said this about this is the other, this is the flip side of external awarding bodies Mm. whatever umbrella term we're using here um is sometimes it gives you the you the ability to say things and not be the bad guy oh yeah so so like i'd love to let you do that i would love to do you know what we're not our insurance will absolutely and um, our insurance less or whatever (laughs) (laughs) you just make stuff up yeah actually you can't um come in if you're a knobhead because insurance (laughs) doesn't cover knobheads um (laughs) that would be good but stuff really dingy it's very dingy it's very damp this is like the start of it isn't it although i said that last time the start it's, of it's, winter but you know like you know if January, anybody's good at February, editing March. can they cut together all the times Gemma said this oh, is the start of this winter this is the start this is the start of, of it but a kid found a hibernating bumblebee yesterday it's oh yeah so cute. That was they cool. were like raking some leaves and found support the podcast little... today by becoming a patreon member so nice at children of the forest dot com when will they come check out, out the again? podcast links for more oh, details in the little spring when you see them all coming out of their holes and then yes. digging another hole for a nest. Oh, maybe. Okay, that's the thing. If you are in the the Facebook group for the podcast yes. uh, and you have anything hibernating on your site and you can get a sneaky photo or just mm. tell us what's hibernating on your site, that would be amazing. You can get this little collection yeah. of like all these hibernating things. Um, yeah. That would be lovely. Um, we had a request from a listener um to do a kind of like podcast a bit more about us and our background and blah 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 oh. anyway i said to them we decided to say to them okay so tell us what questions you have <laughs> that, was like a, that was amazing them, that no, was like we were married them. and you went like i said well i should make him feel included we said i wasn't involved no you were involved <laughs> you were involved because i sent you the thing and you were like let's do a q and a it was your idea <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. it's your it's yeah. I'm really tired now. Okay. I need more coffee. It's not going to happen, is it? Not in the time. Group, no. The group is arriving in nine minutes. Nine minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Right. Bye, Wait. guys. Bye. Oh, we didn't we didn't finish that 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 sentence. They'll still be recording. F- they'll be fine. You're they still kn- recording. They know what no, we're no, going to no. say. No, no, no. You know, <sighs> send send questions. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad we carried on. <laughs> send questions. Good job Wait, they've got this. What? It can be any question. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm going away. It can be any question, listeners. A good question, a serious question, a silly question. If you have any questions, send, send, <laughs> send us a question. Okay, bye. Bye. I love you. Bye. If you like this podcast and want to support more episodes, you can donate through Patreon. Visit patreon.com forward slash children of the forest to show your support for the Forest School podcast.